Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. With me, of course, is the post-primer version of Mike Tagliere. You can find us on Twitter at DanHarris80 at Mike Tagliere NFL. Hi, Tags. How you doing? Hi, Dan. Do you ever feel like, Tags, sometimes you got to sort of, I don't know the best way to put it, but go through something that makes you realize how easy you had it before. And I'm realizing that doing a podcast not dressed as Woody from Toy Story makes me realize how much fun it is to just do a normal podcast without worrying (laughs) that a small cowboy hat is just going to fall off in the middle of our video. So uh, I'm really pumped today. I'm ready to go. This is like a whole new me. So good for you, man. Thanks, man. That's it. I think every time I'm down, I'm just going to do a podcast in the Woody costume and realize like, you know what? Doing a regular podcast. It could be worse. Yeah. Isn't that bad? And what I expect out of you today, Mr. Top 12 expert, I expect you... (laughs) To uh to give us a million dollar lineup. Oh really? Well, I I'm only like 13th in the daily. Oh, I thought it was fantasy. 12th. in in the regular one or the daily. Ne- fantasy never mind, one? you're done. All right. Well, I whatever. It it's up. just when you're top 12 in so many different accuracy competitions, <laughs> it's just very difficult to keep track of all of them. But anyway, we've got a great guest today. Uh, it's Joe Pizzapia, author of the best selling fantasy black book series, host of everything and an above average human being. Find him on Twitter <laughs> at Joe Pizzapia. 17 Joe thank you for making the time to come on how you doing always my friends it was uh, it's always great to talk to you guys and for a minute there when you were telling that story about the woody costume I thought you were you know you're like well you know sometimes life is you know you need perspective and all this stuff it sounded like you were gonna break into like a Randy Newman song or something like oh sometimes when I'm down <laughs> I have to get up and put on my costume and do the podcast <laughs> do you, and yeah the, you, do you kind practice of have, that out of curiosity yes, no I'm he just certainly does. that good that's uh, yeah <laughs> once in a, once a day for an hour Joe practices that who's got the impressive. DFS lineup oh, for God. everybody <laughs> fantasy pros does all right that'll do it for today's show thanks everybody for coming by uh we'll see you next week all right so it's our dfs show of course as it always is on thursday i will give the outline which is of course we will start with our favorite pricier cash game play at each position then we will discuss a couple of cash game value plays at each position we'll do one gpp gamble at each position quick discussion of the defense you guys like and then your stack of the week and your lock of the week but before we get into it it is our dfs show that is a good reminder that you should be using our dfs optimizer over at fantasy pros dot com slash optimizer save yourself hours of research it lets you tweak your lineup as much as you want like locking and excluding players to create your own custom player pool it uses projections that are constantly being updated or you can import your own custom projections if you want sports FanDuel, DraftKings, fancy draft yahoo contests generate up to 150 lineups at a time with our multi-lineup generator again that's at fantasypros.com slash optimizer all right, guys, let's get into it. Favorite pricier cash game play of the day. Let's start with you, our honored guest, Joe Pizzapia. Who is it for you at running back? Let's start. Well, look, sometimes you got to keep it simple and sometimes the chalk is good. I talk about this a lot on my shows. You know, there's the good chalk and you want to surround yourself with that because when you especially look in tournaments, even not just in cash games. But if you look at the million dollar contest winner uh, weekly and we do that, we do a whole evaluation of it on on my podcast at Line Star and you know, usually it's the good chalk. It's it's a lot of the things we talk about that this is a good matchup. This is a good matchup. This is a good corner play. All these things like, you know, you want to target this guy and all these things. And then there's the one off defense or the one off tight end or that one off chase Claypool week and things like that. It's the difference maker. But for the most part, you can build really responsible lineups with some of the good chalk. And I don't know if there's a better chalk than Derrick Henry against the Cincinnati Bengals. I just don't think it exists. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't care if it's expensive this week. There's a lot of play here with some low end running backs because of injuries with some wide receivers that are going to get a lot of play this week because of some injuries of guys ahead of them that you can really make it work. So for me, Derrick Henry is a must. And if you want to pivot off Kamara, because last week Kamara was theoretically the good chalk and he disappointed, it would be a fascinating little pivot because everyone's down on him and the ownership percentage or roster percentage, if you want to call it, is much less. So for me, it's Derrick Henry, though across the board and I don't know what tags thinks about it but like I'm sorry sometimes the answer is just easy and it's Derrick Henry tags agree disagree uh I don't think you have to play Derrick Henry I don't think I I I honestly don't even know if he's going to be considered chalk in this lineup Uh, I don't know what his projected ownership is right now but uh I don't think that he's an you absolutely have to play him and the reason I'm saying that is because the reason I I bang the table for Derrick Henry against the Texans and it's because of basically the the way that teams approached the Texans they were running the ball I think at the second highest rate in the NFL we know what the Titans wanted to do and it was like all right he's going to they're going to go in there and pound the ball 
This game's a little bit different. The Bengals teams have only run the ball 42.4% of the time against them, which is pretty low. And that's the reason they've only faced 22.4 carries per game. Now they are allowing 5.06 yards per carry. And you know, that the team is basically rebuilding. They've already, you know, they told Carlos, Carlos Dunwap to go home. They traded him away. Uh, so there is a rebuild process and I'm not saying Henry's a bad play at all. I actually love him for tournaments, but in cash, I don't know if his opportunity, considering he's not involved in the passing game is as great as I would like to be when you're paying 8K, whereas Alvin Kamara has never, like this year, he has not finished worse than the RB9 in PPR formats. He's His his opportunity is just through the roof. Like, there's nobody touching Alvin Kamara in terms of opportunity. So Kamara at 82, I... <sighs> I mean, I'm I'm not oppo- again. I'm not opposed to Henry. I don't think that he's like an automatic play for me, though. I think it's a, also a DK Fanduel thing. I can understand Kamara being ahead of him on DK because of the receptions, and that that makes sense. That's fine. Uh, but in terms of Fanduel, where you're looking for the touchdown, is that that difference maker? Mm-hmm. The, you know, the half point PPR scoring. What's the I price think, difference between those two on Fanduel? Uh, Ninety five for Derek Henry, and uh, yeah, and nine for him for uh, Alvin Kamara. Oh, and Kamara's I think, cheaper. Yes. He is he is cheaper, but but you know, in terms of when you're looking for the touchdown equity, nobody has more uh, carries in the red zone this year than Derrick Henry. He also is leading touchdowns in the red zone, and also watching Cincinnati as much as I've gotten to watch them, you know, the tackling there is absurd, and it's just you can see the whole fourth quarter Derrick Henry eighty yard run. Just you can smell it, and when you get that. That is a huge difference maker in terms of pulling you over pay lines because that is such a huge play uh, and it's such a huge moment there. And and Mike is right, you know, in terms of and DK, I can understand Kamara being the better chalk, but on FanDuel, I think I would lean DH. What about uh, Kareem Hunt here, guys? He's a little bit down from both of them. He's only 8,200 in FanDuel. Kamara, as Joe said, is 9,000. Derrick Henry is 9,500. And on DraftKings, Kareem Hunt is only 6,900. He's my second-ranked running back of the week, at least in half PPR format. So that's uh, in terms of FanDuel. But, you know, Tags, you were mentioning it uh, before we started recording about the projected wins, especially in that Cleveland game. I mean, you can run all over Las Vegas. I'm a little surprised, I guess, tags, especially for you, that you weren't willing to go up to Kareem Hunt, considering that, you know, he's one of the pricier running backs on the slate, but he's, uh, you know, much less than either Henry or Kamara. I think he's a value play, to be okay. honest. Basically, <laughs> where where he's, I mean, he if you want to consider him a high-priced option, I would absolutely say Kareem Hunt here. And uh, yes, that game, it, it is only, it's Thursday, and this game is obviously taking place on Sunday, so the weather forecast can change, but they're expecting 25 mile an hour sustained winds and 40 mile an hour gusts for that game. That's going to be really difficult for the passing game. Uh, this matchup against the Raiders has been fantastic. Despite only facing 20 carries per game, they've allowed the second most fantasy points to running backs, including more than the Panthers, a team that everybody wants to attack. Uh, they've, done, they've, they've let it done through the air, on the ground, doesn't matter. 160 yards per game to running backs. Kareem Hunt has received 36 of the 45 touches to rounds running backs over the last two weeks. I believe he's locked in. Like he actually probably is the RB1 this week and he costs $6,900 on DK. It's a value. And I I mean, if you want to call him, I don't, I don't really care what you call him. I'm playing him. Right. I mean, to be honest, when I'm putting together some of my notes and I'm looking at these guys, Hunt, I was like, well, Hunt's a value based on this price, but he's also one of the most expensive backs on the slate. So I didn't know whether or not to put him. He's fifth on the main slate. So, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, How about you for that's right. Well, Kareem Hunt's always the right answer for me. I mean, how many shows have I done here going into the season? Right. Where I was like, Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt. How about Kareem Hunt? Like, I, I mean. You know, outside of the the two weeks where those two matchups back to back for Indianapolis and and uh, Pittsburgh were tough, I mean Kareem Hunt has been very good and he's got the backfield to himself. Yeah, the the wins will be somewhat of an issue, I'm sure. But as far as Kareem Hunt scoring wise, he's 69 on DK, he's 82 on Fanduel. That's kind of comparable in terms of range that you'd be paying up for him. And I think it's a it's a, also a perfectly good fade if you want to fade all of the top of running back, go to the value play like Mike is saying, and then pay up at wide receiver because there are guys that will you know get to next that you can load up this week on wide receiver. There's a lot of really good matchups here potentially for no, you know you saw last week with Adams and Lockett and all that. Like, there's an opportunity for a lot of that again this week. All right, let's go right there then, Joe. Let's go to the pricey cash game play for wide receiver. Who's your number one choice? Well, you know what? It's hard not to say Devontae Adams right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I will say Devontae Adams, but, <laughs> but, but, well, I mean, because it's just, it's there. It's obvious. It's, we don't need you don't, to, you like, don't need to apologize. Joe. I'm not, and fine. I refuse to, I won't, I won't do it. Uh, but at the same time, I think you have to realize the last three weeks, nobody's outscoring AJ Brown. 
<laughs> Not mm-hmm. even with that big locket game. I know he had the buy still, but still nobody's outscoring AJ Brown the last three weeks. And this is another matchup here where I just love what the Titans are doing on offense and the play action. They've been able to run with Derrick Henry. I saw a really cool thing on NFL matchup, which is, I love you know, to put the old farts on a show together on NFL matchup. You ever watch that show where they like break down the film and stuff. I love that. Cause I'm a big football nerd guy. And I just love the old guys breaking down the film and they were showing how they were able to get AJ Brown open. And I think all the concerns with AJ Brown coming into this year was, well, he was so efficient, but the volume, the volume, volume, well, he's getting a little bit more volume and he's still equally efficient and it's staggering how good he is. And I can't see him not coming away with a touchdown this game. They're on fire the way this offense is rolling too. So AJ Brown for me is that guy, especially, you know, when you look at the FanDuel price too, he's at 7,500. I think that's a discount. I think he is an 82, $8,300 wide receiver right now at 75. Yeah. And I, I'm going to feel like AJ Brown is the Kareem Hunt of uh, wide receivers. Yeah. In this it's, a, best it's, thing, a right? re- it's a really, you know, somebody I'll, I'll make this brief. Somebody did a fantastic breakdown. Um, I think it was TJ Hernandez last year where he did the average salary per every spot for both the DK and million dollar lineups on FanDuel every week. So it was a compilation. I think after 10 weeks, he had it. And it was fascinating because you would see like, it would look like a fantasy team. You had your quarterback who was somewhere around, you know, 7,700 on FanDuel. You'd have your big time wide receiver who was somewhere around, you know, 8K or something like that or 78. And then it literally looked like, oh, there's a wide receiver one, a wide receiver two. And it's, it, we hardly ever think of it that way. Mm-hmm. But when you look and you see the anomaly of, oh, I can get AJ Brown for maybe $500 cheaper than I should. It makes him even a better investment because it allows you to, pay up for defense or pay up for tight end or something else. Right. I mean, that's the thing with him. It's he is, you know, quote unquote, one of the more expensive options, but he's still a discount, just like Hunt. So, Tags, what about you? Are you paying all the way up for uh, Devonta Adams here? I mean, don't bury the lead there. He just said pay up for a defense. Do not, do not, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you can get to Devonta Adams, absolutely. It's just I'm struggling with running back right now, trying to figure out the value options and what I want to go to. Like, do I want to come down from Derrick Henry or do I want to come down from Alvin Kamara down to maybe someone like Josh Jacobs or or my Miles Gaskin, we're going to talk about those guys in a moment uh, because I also want to pay up a tight end. Like this is a week where tight ends are going to absolutely smash. Like every, all three of them are in spots where they can literally break the slate and you don't want to miss that for, you know, anywhere between 5,600 and 7K. So it's going to be really difficult to get up to Adams, but know that uh, against the Vikings, there have already been four wide receivers who have hit 22 plus PPR points against them, including Devonte Adams when he caught 14 passes for 156 yards and two touchdowns. Oh, and by the way, the Vikings since that game have lost Anthony Barr. They've lost, they've traded traded away uh, Yannick Ngakwe. They never got Everson Griffin. So this is like a disaster. Like it is, this team is in like a, they're on a fire sale. They should start selling off more and more pieces. It's I mean starting two rookie cornerbacks, Devontae Adams. I mean, Aaron Jones might not play. And if Aaron Jones doesn't play, it's like, cool, Jamal Williams is fine. But Devontae Adams is going to get peppered with targets again. If you can get to him, great. And if you if you want to get to him, I have some value wide receivers we're going to talk about later. Well, and not only that, Mike, but I mean, and not I, I got a fan. I got a fan duel lineup right now that's got Derrick Henry, Brown, and Adams in it, and it's it is not hard to do. Like you, you, you know, or you could do Camaro, whatever you want to do. Like the, it is pretty easy to make this all work, and you have plenty left over. Even at, at the third wide receiver, at the tight end, at the flex spot, it is not hard. To, and I always feel like FanDuel is just a little bit looser than DK in terms of pricing, especially this time of year. All right, before we keep going, let me tell you about a little tradition that I have. Before the start of every season, I pick one player I have rostered on a fantasy team. And I get some sort of piece of memorabilia of theirs, a signed jersey, a signed helmet, signed cleats, a picture, something. It started when a buddy of mine was headed into his championship match and he rostered Marshawn Lynch and he bought something autographed from him. And then Lynch capped off an improbable comeback with that crazy beast quake mode run on Sunday night football against the Cardinals. You remember? So since then, I've adopted the same strategy, but at the start of every season and I get my little good luck charm from the only place that you should be going for sports memorabilia, and that's Pristine Auction. Thousands of auctions every day at pristineauction.com. Thousands. You don't see something you like, you're going to tomorrow. Prices, insanely inexpensive, probably because when you have thousands of auctions every day, things are just going to slip through. It's totally free to bid and browse. You only pay for something if you win. If you don't believe me, that's fine. Go to pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com, and then buy a good luck charm and thank them when you win your league. 
And if you want $5 in free credits, use our code FANCYPROS in the registration field when you sign up. They will know we sent you. Again, that's pristineauction.com. Use our code FANCYPROS. Let's go to quarterback Joe. Who's your favorite pricier cash game play at quarterback? <sighs> well, you know, it's hard not to like Russell Wilson. <laughs> You know, I mean, sure. at this point, it, it's it's very difficult because he is he's just playing out of his mind right now. Um, I would always be looking for Kyler Murray because he controls so much of his scoring, but we can't look for him on a bye this week. So Russell Wilson is is definitely in that vein. I think losing that game last week, you know, he's going to take that personally. He's going to show up here. Also, all the injuries to the running back position there is tough, but I'm not one to pay up that much for quarterback typically. So Tannehill would be my pivot there against Cincinnati because there's another guy too. Could you imagine what a difference a year makes? Like this time, just about last year, he was backing up Marcus Mariota. And now we're talking about him. It's like, yeah, he's kind of like our must safe game, uh, catch game quarterback. Like what, what world do we live in? It's unbelievable how different a year could change everything. Yeah, and as Tags and I always like to joke about, they break every model of efficiency that you could possibly throw out there whatsoever. How about you, Tags? Are you willing to pay up for quarterback this week? And if so, who would be your guy? Oh, I mean, if you're paying up Mahomes, uh, I don't know how you wouldn't want to go with Mahomes. Is it Mahomes? I got to ask you, because are you concerned at all between the Le'Veon Bell revenge game and the possible lead that they would have to push Mahomes to really I know they can run up obviously they can but does that concern you at 9k I mean that is really expensive for All a right. so here check this out the Jets uh, have check it out the check Jets out, have yo. allowed a massive wait, 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 like, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk bad about the Jets are we yeah, well, no, 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 I'm just going no, 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 to no, no, say why Patrick Mahomes realistic is a special. Right okay, all right, all right, guys. They've allowed a 71.4% completion rate, and they've played against Josh Allen twice, Jimmy Garoppolo, Philip Rivers, Brett Rippon, Kyler Murray, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. They've allowed an average of 29 points per game to those teams. Patrick Mahomes has accounted for 18 of the 21 Chiefs touchdowns they've scored on offense. Don't 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 think you shouldn't play Patrick Mahomes because Le'Veon Bell wants to score a damn touchdown. Le'Veon Bell is not as good as Clyde Edwards Hilaire. They're not going to use him as they do oh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I'm just trying to like say, okay, between Hilaire touch on equity, between oh, I know. Bell I just have to yell equity, at you when I get a chance, between, Joe. It's fine. <laughs> and, and you should. And this is what we do. And by the way, when I see you at Thanksgiving, we're gonna yell at each other. Yes. That's what Italians do. That's what we do. Pass the potatoes. What's the matter with you? Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I worry about Mahomes at that salary, though, because he has to then have that max game. Like, you're also all no, not thinking that he doesn't come out of this game in the fourth quarter. And I think that is a distinct possibility, too. And I think you need to understand that. I mean, they have a 34 point team implied total. 34. Yeah, but that could be the first half. You and I both know that. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying it can't. And if, if it does, that means he's accounted for probably four of those five touchdowns somehow. Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. You did, let's not forget the defensive touchdown or the special teams touchdown. That the Jets are more than capable of giving up as well. Tags, if you, so if you're paying up, then you're willing to pay the little extra bit. I mean, I guess on DraftKings, it is $300 more. On FanDuel, it's $500 more. You're willing to pay up. If you are paying up for that, then yeah. you're willing to go with Mahomes over Yeah, Wilson. it's a non-divisional game. And the 49ers, so that's that's a weird one for me. I think there's just a little uncertainty in the Russell Wilson one because it's that divisional game and they've, they've seen each other so much. But I will say that San Francisco, they, they look so good in terms of like what they've allowed. They've allowed the second fewest fantasy points overall per game to their opponents. But if you like look at the matchups that they've had, um, they've they've they played the Jets, the Giants and the Patriots. I mean, it's not exactly juggernaut offenses they've been playing. Last yeah, that's week. what I'm saying is like if you break it down, I did in the primer this week. I showed the quarterbacks who rank top 13 in points per game on the season and what they did against the 49ers. And then you look at everybody else and they're all bad. And it's like, that's the teams that they've really done well against and they've limited fantasy production. So um, Russell Wilson is playing extremely well. He may not have a running back that's actually healthy or alive uh, this week. So, I mean, there's there's definitely reasons to like Wilson. I just think there's a few more question marks. Wilson in tournaments is fantastic, but uh, in cash, basically, I just think Patrick Mahomes is the, is the safest thing. Now, to be fair, Joe, I don't think either of us are going to be paying up in cash for a quarterback with everything we want to fit in our lineup this week. Probably not. No, I mean, I think and, and especially on FanDuel, why would you when you can get somebody who is the safest Tannehill in that mid to low seven range and then get guys that if you want to, you know, be a little bit more contrarian in terms of roster percentage, there's guys like Burrow and Carr and, and you know, even Herbert to a certain extent, like, you know, all these guys are kind of the seven five ish range, give or take a couple hundred dollars on FanDuel this week is so user friendly that basically you could just interchange guys. And if you're somebody who likes to play the multi-entry tournaments, you could do 
that. You can have this lineup that you love and then interchange some quarterbacks. And maybe one of those quarterbacks will have that one, you know, transformative day, that one big day or that rushing touchdown on top of something. And, and then boom, all of a sudden you, you've got, you know, a big difference maker in a tournament that maybe, you know, takes you from $25 to $250 or something like that. Yep. All right, let's go to tight end here, guys. Let's stick with the pricier cash game option. Go ahead, Joe, start us off. I mean, it's Kittle. I mean, you know, I know Mike loves Kelsey too, but like here, here's my thing with Kelsey every week. Every week I do the same thing with the Chiefs and I, I talk about it on the TV show. I talk about it on the podcast. It's like the Chiefs are amazing, but because they're so good at football, it makes them really difficult week to week to target and say, okay, yeah, you know, it should be this guy, but it's not always because they're so damn good at everything. So they can just spread the ball. They could be so efficient, you know, freaking Pringle could get a touchdown for all we know. It's it's that's the kind of team they are. And that's what makes them so incredibly difficult to guard against. But I think in the circumstance with Debo out, I like Ayuk a lot this week. Also, I think Kendrick Bourne has some use. We'll talk about him maybe later. But Kittle for me is that one guy. If I am going to pay up in tight end, I will. Seattle's defense, we all know, I mean, the, the amount of yards they give up per game, it's 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 like over 400. It's staggering like what, what they're doing right now. Like, so uh, I'm going to go with Kittle here. He's 7K on DK, 77 on FanDuel. You got to pay up for it. But luckily this week, there is some give with wide receivers if you want to play down a little bit or even RB2. How about you, Tags? I mean, if there was a week that you were going to bet on a tight end getting more than 10 targets, it would be this one for, for Kittle. I mean, I have... I, I have no issue playing Kittle. That's why I, saw, I think it's one of the three tight ends. It depends on your price range, right? Because it might come down to those few hundred dollars off that you get for Kelsey and DraftKings. Um, if you look at the Jets against tight ends, they've allowed at least 50 yards to, tra- uh, to Tyler Croft, Mo Ali Cox, Adam Shaheen, and Jordan Reed. Those four tight ends scored four touchdowns. Like, it's a terrible... Uh, it's a matchup that Kelsey should smash. He's coming off a slower game. He typically bounces back uh, in those games in cash. He's about as safe as they come. He may not smash in tournaments like he might leave you out if he doesn't smash as much as Kittle. I just think he's just as safe. And then I also think Darren Waller is a fantastic play. Mm-hmm. I mean, depending on that weather, because if that wind is really a factor, then obviously we have to bake that into our projections and you know how we feel about players. But um, the Browns have been tortured by tight ends this year. And uh, Waller has, he leads the NFL, our, our all tight ends and targets per game. He's averaging basically like n- just over nine targets per game, I think. And he's at 5,600. So you're getting a thousand off Kelsey from him. So it really comes down to price range for me. I love all three of those tight ends. And, and like I said, I don't think this is a week to get cute and be like, oh, I'm going to save some money at tight end just because I'm looking to get, you know, 10, 12 points out of the position and walk away. I think this is one if you don't have one of those tight ends, you're probably going to be left out of cash. So in cash games, you are playing one of Kelsey Kittle or Yep, depending on what I can fit in in terms of like construction. Yeah. And how about, are you, Joe? Are you definitely playing one of these guys? Uh, you know, in, in cash, I think Kittle would be the guy. That, that's okay. the one that I'm going for. And and I'm looking for, once again, the, the hyper competitive matchup. It's the same thing like last week. Our hyper competitive matchup that we were targeting was Pittsburgh and Tennessee because we thought it would go down to the wire. And the first half of the game, we're like, oh, boy, I don't know if this is going to be. And then, of course, there's <laughs> Tennessee. They show up there because that team has no quit in them. They're like the anti-Cowboys. They have zero quit in them whatsoever. And it makes them fun to watch, but it also makes them one of these teams that, you know, you know, it doesn't matter if they're behind. They're not going to lose their mind and get away from what they do. And I think that is what I'm looking at. San Fran, Seattle, it's more of a contest game. It's just it's almost like a playoff game in that sense. It basically is because of the records of everybody in this division. And that's why I like him a little bit more than Kelsey, because I feel like if they do have that lead, the last thing you want is be running guys out there to have them get hurt. You know, Andy Reid's not going to do that as much as you might want to run up the score and it's going to be fun. I mean, you could see, you know, like I said, backup quarterbacks in this game. They're they in a different class. We always talk about, well, what would it look like if Alabama played a played a, a team, you know, in the NFL? This is what it would look like. It would look like the Chiefs versus the Jets. That's what, yeah. or Clemson. That's what it would look like. And only the Jets are going to be that college team. Yeah, I, I really can't argue with any of that. Before we keep going, let's talk about Stat Hero and the combination of daily fantasy sports with survivor pools. OK, you know, typical daily fantasy, right? You enter the huge tournaments. You play against 50 or 100 other people, maybe, if you're doing a 50-50. You build your best lineup, and then you hope that yours can beat theirs. But a lot of times, you're playing against the best fantasy players in the world. You're spending as much time researching game theory as you are in just trying to pick the best team. That's not how it works with Stat Hero. They give you a great new way to enjoy daily fantasy by combining the best of daily fantasy sports with survivor contests. With Stat Hero, all you need to do to start getting paid is to beat the house. They post a lineup, 
from an NFL team and you choose your lineup from a different team to try to beat them, if you win, you get paid and you move on. But you can never choose that same team again. Let me give you an example. I'm in a contest this week. Stat Heroes lineup consists of Bengals players, Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, A.J. Green, Gio Bernard. Their MVP, which gets you double points for that player, is Tyler Boyd. And you also get a wild card selection of a kicker from any other team, and that's Michael Badgley. That's fine. My team, the Chiefs, taking on the Jets. Patrick Mahomes is my QB. Tyree Kill, both Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Le'Veon Bell. Travis Kelsey is my MVP for double points, and I got Jason Myers as my kicker. Assuming I win, I not only get paid, I also move on to the next round where I just can't pick the Chiefs. I can pick any other team. So you get it? You get paid when you win, and like a survivor contest, you keep going when you do with the last survivor taking the grand prize. So you need to pick your best lineup, but be careful because you cannot reuse that same team in the same contest. I have a ton of friends who play, and they think I'm crazy for not saving the Chiefs. It's the Jets. It's a Le'Veon Bell revenge game. I've got plenty of options for the following weeks. I'm taking my win, and I'm going to move on, but you can do it however you want. Just go to StatHero.com or look for their app. Use our code Fantasy Pro seriously. It's really fun and a whole different way of playing fantasy. Stathero.com, code Fantasy Pros. Let's go to cash game value plays now at, at this point, guys. Let's, as we did with the pricier cash game options, let's start with the running back. Joe, who do you like as a value game play uh, for cash? Uh, for cash value gameplay, it, Kareem Hunt is definitely that guy. I mean, he's definitely in that conversation without a doubt. Uh, I think you can easily get him in there at 82. Fade the top of the board a little bit, take that money, go somewhere else. Um, and, and it's very difficult because there's not a whole lot. I love the two guys at the top. And then after that, I am more apt to pay down at running back this week because of the matchups, number one, and who's left at the position. And I can't feel good about, I love to, I mean, I'd love to talk about Delvin Cook, who's very expensive too this week, but he, there's way too much risk in this game for him because what if he comes out and re-aggravates that injury? And that's a tough investment. Um, and Jacobs hasn't played well. I mean, Clyde Edwards Lair, I think is safe. And I don't think enough people are talking about him. And I think against the Jets, that's a pretty good value too. Uh, at 75, again, not really a tournament play necessarily, but in terms of a value play, even with Lev Bell around, I still think Clyde Edwards Lair, especially even in a full PPR like DK has some value. Josh Jacobs is pretty cheap uh, he is. Mm-hmm. on uh, on DraftKings, at least. Not so much on FanDuel. His price no. is still up there. So, Tags, obviously, you were going to talk about Kareem Hunt as well, as you said, for your cash game value play. That's your guy, and that sounds like it. Who else are you looking to play as a cash game There's value There's a couple play? of guys I'm looking at here. Melvin Gordon's one of them, depending on what's going on with Philip Lindsay. If Philip Lindsay's held out with a concussion, then I would play Gordon at 5,600 against his former team. There is a little bit of a, the revenge game narrative there and all that, and I know they left on, so, I'll say, pretty bad terms between those two. Um, but the, the Chargers have been, I'll call them a mediocre defense against running backs this year. They're a better pass defense they are than a run defense. And at 5,600 for a guy that would get 18 plus touches, uh, I would definitely like Gordon in that spot. Again, that depends on if Lindsay's out. Josh Jacobs, so that's this is the tough part. I actually like Josh Jacobs at his price at 6,200 on DK. Uh, his opportunity is up there with some of the elite running backs. Unfortunately, he hasn't really produced, but and it's really difficult to play running backs on both sides of the ball, right? Because if we're playing Kareem Hunt, is it, you know, it's negative correlation with Josh Jacobs. But if that game does have a lot of wins, then we're going to see a lot of carries. We're going to see a lot of checkdowns. That should be a relatively competitive game between those two. Um, so last week was the first time Jacobs finished a game with fewer than 18 touches. So if you're getting that, you know, at 6,200, I think that he's in play for cash games. And then lastly, the one player that, I mean, I understand wanting to play Miles Gaskin for 5,200 with the opportunity that he's gotten, but against the Rams, the Rams have allowed the sixth fewest uh, weighted points per opportunity in the NFL. I mean, they're one of the better run defenses. You have a rookie quarterback under center. I I, I just don't feel great about Miles Gaskin because I think I just feel like there's a whole lot of uncertainty about his role. Now that two is there, does he get a lot of check down passes? He might. Yeah, but I would rather see it than playing him. Uh, if it's, it's not a cash play. I'm sorry. It's not. But I think a lot of people are thinking that like that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I know you haven't gotten to GPP stuff yet. They are thinking that. And I think they're wrong. If you want a running back in that same vein that you could play in GPP or cash in that same price range on FanDuel, it's Gio Bernard, because over the last 10 games for Tennessee, they're 25th in terms of rushing touchdowns allowed in terms of yardage allowed. And I know Gio is not like staggeringly good at this point in his career. But he's the guy and he has touchdown equity on top of that and he has reception equity. So when you when you add in all those things, 
it's almost like he falls into points accidentally. And I think at 59, I'd rather him be the guy as opposed to the unknown with Gaskin like we're talking about. And yeah. that's you assuming, of course, that Joe Mixon is going to be out this week, right? Assuming Joe Mixon is right. Like, yeah, which he has next week, so it seems like it's automatic. Yeah, but we oh, we said that about Chris Carson, too, who, by the way, may also <laughs> play this week, apparently. because The Chris Seattle Carson. running back situation might be the most infuriating. <laughs> yeah. Every five minutes, you have to look right. at something and it changes. I don't even know what to say about it anymore. I just really, really, really like constantly recommending Carlos Hyde as a waiver wire pickup only to see him not play and Chris Carson play. That's kind of my jam. Um, what about if uh, if Aaron Jones is out here? Do you guys like Jamal Williams at 6,100 on DraftKings? I mean, he obviously had a, a big day last week. I think on DK, yeah, because, you know, he can catch the football and it's, I mean, the reports so far, I know Mike's probably in agreement too. It's like, well, let's, let's ease Aaron Jones back in because the Packers are looking long-term here. The Packers, I'm sure, are pretty confident they're going to beat Minnesota. Now, let's see if that comes back to bite them a little bit. You know, it got close there at the end of that game, but it was garbage time. But at the same time, I think that's a situation I'm staying away from because whenever you start dividing carries, then you really have to have somebody have that big play or that big moment or the two touchdowns or whatever it is. That low end variable has to hit when you, all of a sudden you're splitting a backfield. And that's something you have to pay close attention to. Now, it's something that I was taking advantage of with Cleveland because of the amount of volume both of those guys had and the way they were being used. It made sense. Plus, everybody was off of them because of that reason. So it was a, like a perfect storm. But that is an anomaly. That is not something you can count on from a lot of other teams. Yeah, I mean, I meant more if Jones is out for the game. Oh, if Jones is out, I'd go right back to Williams, 100%. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. And even though he's he's risen in price, like last week, he was a phenomenal play at the price because they weren't prepared for it. Even though they, they've moved it up, I think he's seven k. If memory serves, he's right there, sixty one on DK on Fandle. He's seven k. Yeah. yeah, on sixty one on DK, Mike. You said yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's easy enough. Like that's that's almost a lock. I think. Yeah, on Fandle, I mean, they they really bumped him up. I mean, he's one of the more expensive running backs. Which was smart, which is odd. It's not like them to do that. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that you see it. Yeah. No, that's why I wanted to ask. And Tags, how about you? Assuming that Aaron Jones is that I'm kind of expecting him to be out uh, at this point. That may be wrong. We'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, just reading the tea leaves between the uh, – the quotes, it sounds like they're going to be careful with them. And Williams, of course, performed well. Tags, if he's out, I mean, are you just easily playing Jamal Williams? In I wouldn't this game? say easily. I'd say he's in the same conversation with someone like Josh Jacobs. The the, the matchup last week, guys, was against Houston. <laughs> Houston is a team like I, I talk about it every week. Like the stat sheets show it. But if you actually watch the Houston Texans games, you should see some of the size holes that running backs are running through. It's kind of ridiculous. It doesn't even require skill. Um, Jamal Williams did look good. And I'm not going to put it past Matt LaFleur to involve A.J. Dillon a little bit more in the offense. It, you know, it's just something that happens in this offense, even with Aaron Jones. So why would we expect it not to have much Jamal Williams? And the Vikings are they're a better run defense than they are pass defense. So it's. I mean, Aaron Jones has smashed against that team the last few times they've played, but I mean, I would consider him for sure. I don't know if he's automatic, though. Okay. Joe, any other cash game value plays at running back that we haven't talked about yet? Or are you ready to no. move on to wide receiver? Ready to move on. Let's do it. All right. Let's go to wide receiver then. Cash game value plays. And again, A.J. Brown sort of, you know, fits in between one of the more expensive ones, but especially on FanDuel, at least one of the cash game value plays as well. But who else are you looking at here? Uh, look, in terms of value plays in cash, I think that you could always go right to Cincinnati to the other side. I mean, I'm, spoiler alert, I love this game for fantasy points. Um, you know, lack of defense, you know, quarterbacks like to throw the ball now. <laughs> like, well, why not? Uh, but I think when you're looking at Tyler Boyd salary on FanDuel, it's kind of absurd that it's just 6,400. I mean, it just is like he's been very good. I think that is a really good value where, you know, he's part of the offense. That's what you're looking for. You're looking to lock in targets. He's had all of those. And I understand Green and Higgins are also there, too. And Higgins, I think, is a good play also. But in terms of value, I think that's where you'd go. And I think that, you know, that's kind of that range. I'm always looking somewhere around 6K or something like that or 66 or something like that, where you find those guys. And typically this was the DJ Moore price of last year. That's 60. He was like 64, 66 every week on FanDuel and every week you play him and every week he would give you double digits and you'd look great. I feel like Tyler Boyd is that version this year. How about you, Tags? What do you think about Boyd? Uh, I'm cool with Boyd. Yeah, you guys are cool now. Everything's cool. You guys worked it out. <laughs> We're cool. Uh, no, uh, cool. I've been That's saying cool for a while that Boyd was someone that I'd be, I was buying in redraft, that I liked him quite a bit and that he was going to be the... Uh, He's basically be the number one receiver for the Bengals for the remainder of the season. There's going to be a few weeks where he doesn't like smash, especially against a team like the Ravens when he struggled. Uh, but the Titans have they've been a 
a little bit better in the slot than I think people imagine. Like last week, they had Juju Smith-Schuster, a similar type receiver who's that big slot. Um, he was targeted, what, 13, 15 times or whatever it was and walked away with a decent enough game. Uh, they've been beat up on the perimeter, though, and you have A.J. Green and T. Higgins. Like this, um, spoiler alert, this is my stack here. Um, you look at this team, and I really don't care which two receivers you stack. You could basically take Burrow. You could put him with Green, Higgins, and then come back on the other side with Henry and kind of play it that way if you want to. Uh, you could even get A.J. Brown in there if you want. Uh, this is one of the games that I am absolutely loving the over on uh so i mean if you want to attack anybody in this game i'm okay with it uh i just feel like me i'm, I'm over on dk and aj green at 4500 seems like a ridiculous value all right so that is that the guy who you were thinking of then that tags as your cash game value play? he's one of them i have a lot i have actually a, quite a few names and this is like something i was hoping to work through with you guys Go. <laughs> well Start. cole beasley's another one too for me so I don't know if he's on your list, but that's another guy. Keenan Allen at 6,200 is underpriced uh, in a PPR form, especially with the targets. Oh, 100%. Yes, that is that was the next one to talk about. So we are, we're in lockstep there. Yeah, he's like a he's like a top 10 receiver with Justin Herbert under center. Denver stops the run. They're like literally the best defense in the NFL when it comes to stopping the run uh, in terms of weighted opportunity to running backs. They're, they're fantastic. So uh, Keenan Allen against Bryce Callahan, he should get it done. Uh, I like Kendrick Bourne at 3,500. Yes. I like yep. Brandon Ayuk at 5,800. Yeah, but mm-hmm. these are GPP guys. I don't these think so. Value, I, think you know? they're va- I think if you want to pay up for Devontae Adams or if you want to pay up for some of these running backs, you want to have one of them. Yes, I would. I mean, as we get into GPP, to, like this is like from a construction standpoint. Yeah, you're right. Like you're going to need one of these guys. Kendrick Bourne is on my GPP list when we get there. But on DK, like there are a couple we like to call them free squares on my show. There is a couple free squares. You're going to need a free square on DK in order to get up to any of the, the good shock that we talked about earlier. But you have to understand, too, in cash is also something to be said about pulling down from those guys just a little bit and pulling up in some other spots just so you don't have that bottom out because you can't take that zero in cash. Like no, no. I, well, that's the thing is Bourne has seen at least five targets in the game. No, that Debo Samuel one. didn't Bourne play. I love. And here's the thing. So what I'm saying is that the Seattle Seattle's terrible against receivers. We know that the 49ers are so shorthanded that the ball has to go somewhere. I'm curious at 3,500, basically in a cash line of what you're looking for out of Kendrick Bourne at 3,500, you're looking for 11 PPR points. Can you get that? Yeah, he can get that. I would agree. I would agree with that. Ayuk also becomes very interesting, too. Um, he's like the other version then where you're talking about because he's going to touch the ball maybe more. He has that opportunity for that big play, which is going to be interesting, too, when they run the jet sweeps, when they run those other things going on there. And I think that's something to keep in Dan, mind. Dan, what will you feel better about? Like Kendrick Bourne at 3,500 or going up to Ayuk at 58? Now, Ayuk is close to Keenan Allen. That's the reason it's difficult for me to get there. That's why you don't do yeah. that. That's right. I, they're both on my list, by the way. And I did have them on the list for cash. But yeah, because of I, I would prefer someone like Keenan Allen and given I express, I would just go ahead and uh, and take the uh, the discount there with Bourne, because I do think that he's fairly safe, you know, given what his price is and given his floor uh, with Debo out. They're going to, as we talked about many times, text, they, they got to go somewhere. They got to go somewhere with the ball. And I do think that Bourne's going to get involved. Joe, we were talking over you a little bit when we were switching over. Oh, and uh, you were mentioning, I think, was it Cole Beasley? Well, was Beasley's one you- another one of these guys that's, you know, low priced on FanDuel. He's 53. I mean, with with the lack of consistent running game they've been able to put out there, the Buffalo Bills, like he's kind of become that he's become that guy where you know, I think he's got like 22 of 25 over his receptions and targets the last couple of games of memory serves, something like that. And, you know, he doesn't have the biggest touchdown equity, but he's got the volume. And with the way the Patriots defense has is, is looked the last couple of games, that's another guy on DK2. Corey Davis is just 51, so if you want to get away from A.J. Brown or, you know, God forbid you get that thing where, well, Corey Davis ends up catching the touchdown. I mean, if you look at Cincinnati, you know, last 10 games, they are 192 receiving yards to wide receivers. That's 28th in the league. Uh, They're also giving up over a touchdown average over those last 10 games, too, to wide receivers. So there's a lot to go around here in that Tennessee and Cincinnati game. And I think if you have the big pieces, that's great. Sprinkle in some of the little ones on either side and inverse them back and forth. And I think if you play around with that and some multi entries, I think it will, will yield good things. One of those lineups will definitely hit, I think. Joe, with Beasley, if Brown plays, because I think he did. Practice. If Brown plays, forget. No, okay. it's 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 very tied into John Brown's calf. You can mark from when John Brown's calf has been giving him problems to Cole Beasley having good games. And it's been great. And Josh Allen's play has fallen off a little bit, too. Uh, this is probably the least interesting game <laughs> that the Patriots <laughs> bills in terms of fantasy mm-hmm. this week in DFS. But it's something to note, especially in the full point PPR, how steady Beasley's been, because that floor is something that's worth noticing. Would you guys take any? Do you guys want to notice? 
notice anything in like Beasley in terms of like last year against the Patriots defense that was a lot better? It, it's the same scheme, uh, but Beasley in two games against them last year caught seven balls for 75 yards in the first game. In the second game, they were like, screw it, we'll let him have it. Seven catches for 108 yards. So, you know, with Stephon Gilmore potentially shadowing um, Stephon Diggs, John Brown coming back off the injury. Right. I right. think Beasley is an interesting play for sure. Um, he's 53. Is that what you said? I think 53. 53 I think he's on 53 FanDuel, on DraftKings yeah. too. <laughs> I love when, yeah, you're right. He is. <laughs> that's that's one of those things you got to love that, right? When the guy's the same price and you go, huh? How's that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Patriots slot cornerback Jonathan Jones has been targeted once every 4.2 snaps, which ranks as the third highest mark in the league. So teams are attacking him. Um, it's just a matter of like, do the, do the Bills throw the ball? And even though teams have chosen to run the ball against New England, the bills are not a running team. They can't, they can't do anything on the ground right now. So Beasley is definitely interesting, but they, they're pricing. If you took Josh Allen's rush yards away from that total, they are the lowest team in the league in Russian football. Oh yeah. Going into last week. We talked about Devin Singletary on the start uh, sit podcast where basically we don't even know why people want to start him anymore. It's tough, man. Right. And boss has an opportunity in this game to show something and take this job. This is a big date. Like that's another one. He's like dart throw guys where it's like, all right, you know, you watch what Wilson did last week against the Patriots run the football. And like if it's a it's a low <laughs> it's a low, low probability, but it's a probability nonetheless to consider, you know, because I mean this is a real shot for this kid to kind of take control of this backfield. But I don't know. I'm not hold I don't know if I'm ready to invest in it yet. All right, let's go to quarterback. Let's go to a cash game value play. Who do you have, Joe? Uh, cash game value play a quarterback. Um, look, I kind of it's funny because it's kind of the same guys. It's like it's Tannehill. It's Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of the values. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to drop down to GPP, there's some other guys there. But but I, I would say that um, in terms of the value, I, it's still Tannehill for me, like that bang for your buck on FanDuel, at least. Man, it is really tough not to like that. Um, I think there's a lot of value in Derek Carr, who's been good le- recently. He's going to be far less rostered than Tannehill if you want to pivot down to there a little bit. Uh, but yeah, like I, it's hard to get away from Tannehill. I just like guys that control their own points. And he's been one of those quarterbacks who's been doing that. And, you know, when you when you take away Kyler Murray for me on a week and I keep looking around there and, you know, you, you know, it's like those are the guys. And, you know, when Dak was at Dak peak Dak, I was paying up for Dak every week. But right now it's kind of tough the way the, the, the matchups have fallen and the buys have fallen. So for me, I would still go with Tannehill. I think Carr has some use as well. And Joe Burrow, pardon me, and Joe Burrow. Yeah, and on FanDuel, I mean, those guys and are... And they're all you know, the same Burrow price, is, basically, so it's like, exactly, whatever. Exactly, right. Yeah, so Tannehill and Burrow were the two guys that stuck out to me. Yes, How about you, Tannehill and Burrow are fantastic options. Um, now, they're more mid-priced options. Uh, DK sucks because they so they finally caught up to Tannehill and says, well, we're going to price him up 60 Yeah, they have. <laughs> <laughs> so right. that, it's a little more difficult to get to him. I, I do think Burrow's a good play at 62. I'd probably rather play him in tournaments, but I think he's fine in cash if you want to go there because he does present at least a rushing floor, and that's what worries me about the other two options that I wrote down because Derek Carr has no mobility. So if that game basically turns into a, a wind fest, like they're, they're projecting weather wise, that's a very big problem for someone like Derek Carr and you cannot play him in cash. Uh, I agree. And that's the, what it, it always concerns me about Carr and cash anyways, though, is because basically if he's having an off day, throwing the ball, you're just screwed. And he's going to leave you out to drive because quarterbacks in today's NFL to get you into cash, you basically need your quarterback to score 20 points. You know what I mean? So Derek mm-hmm, Carr, mm-hmm. it's it. I understand the thought, but I, I would rather probably play Jimmy Garoppolo. He has no floor with his legs either, but he's also running low on running backs. And if you look at the matchup is against the Seahawks, no quarterback has thrown the ball fewer than 39 times they've all completed at least 27 passes Jimmy Garoppolo by the way if you guys don't know has one of the highest yards per attempt of all quarterbacks like of all time like he's been he's been rather efficient now he hasn't been asked to throw the ball a whole lot but guys I was gonna say is it on three on, but guys, attempts Cam, no. <laughs> uh, wait, but no 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 but Cam Newton Cam Newton threw for 397 yards against his defense mm-hmm yeah, you're yeah. right. Do we need to even but, say any more? No, than I, that? I love Garoppolo. Garoppolo is one of my GPP guys. We'll get to, but like, yeah, I, I mean, wish he had Debo, but I, th- I think at 54, if you really, really want to pay down, I would go down to Garoppolo. OK, all right. I don't I don't hate that play necessarily. Let's go to tight end, though, guys. Uh, Joe, who is I mean, again, we, we've talked about that. This is a week that we we kind of like paying up for tight end. But if we are looking at cash game value plays, who do you like here? At well, tight end? I mean, Darren Waller is always a huge value because obviously the amount of target volume he gets. If Johnny Smith was healthier, that would be the place I would go immediately. Um, but I think it's a very high low thing for me when it comes to tight ends. And I'm typically like this anyway. It's like if there's a matchup that I love, then I will pay up for the Kittles or the Kelsey's or I will give that a shot. And 
if not, then I'm just looking for touchdown equity. I'm finding the guy. Who's the dude that's going to catch a touchdown for me and be a tight end one this week? What's the matchup? What's the weakness in the linebacking core? Who's getting those red zone looks? And I, I think maybe he, he's a, he's priced on FanDuel a little bit more like a, a GPP tight end. But I think Gasecki is that guy. Because if you see the way the Rams struggle in the slot, the way he's going to line up there probably – the way he's going to have to get rid of the football real fast, unless Aaron Donald and here are going to get real close real fast. I think that to me is probably where I would lean. I, and it might be chalky and it might be a high percentage, but I don't think that makes it wrong. So Gasecki's probably that other one outside of Waller. You save a probably thousand dollars. What do you think, Tex? <sighs> I, um... And Gasecki's got a ton of run, red zone targets too on the year. He hasn't converted a lot, but he's got a ton of them. So that's also another thing to keep in mind with him. I have a headache trying to figure out what to do with Jonu Smith because I, I, I want to like him here at 4,100. Uh, it's a fantastic. You want to love him here. Yeah, you, you do. <laughs> but the concern is that he played basically all, almost all the snaps last week in terms of like his normal workload, maybe a little bit less, but he only ran 14 pass routes. And uh, Jared Smala, he's a, a guest of the, sh- the front of the show. He's been on before. And he he posted something on Twitter that it made me think a little bit. And it said, Johnny Smith was kept in the block a lot more than usual in week seven. And is that, is that what's going to happen moving forward because of the fact that Taylor Luan, their starting left tackle is out for the year. Are they going to keep him in the block a little bit more because of that? And that's enough to, and it's not well, just Mike, I got a question for you. Do you think it was because of that or the health? Do you think it was because of what, what the health or option three is the pass rush of the Pittsburgh Steelers being much better than most average. That's, teams. that's a good point too. So it's like, it's a, it's an incredible, like we don't know the answer, and that the uncertainty makes it really tough to invest in for me. For and then that, right. yeah, for cash, especially like a, in tournaments, I think you, there's some upside yeah. there. Cause even if he catches the touchdown, you go, yay, look at Yay. him. Call the touchdown. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's a struggle because I mean, I, from a, from a coaching standpoint, I'm sure you would say, Hey, you know, we need to make sure we protect the quarterback here. Cause these guys are murdering quarterbacks, especially the week before you saw what they did to Baker Mayfield. <laughs> right? mm-hmm. You know, like I think that's a, that, that to me makes a lot of sense, but maybe you're right. Maybe it's a, a, a trend with Lou and the injury. So tags, is there anybody else then that you're looking at? I mean, again, we've talked about paying up, we've talked about Darren Waller. Is there anybody else you're looking at a tight end? If you're looking to save money in a cash, game I mean, I, I really don't want to save a tight end this week. I feel like you're just playing with fire. Irv Smith at 3K. If you re- if you're looking for a cheap tight end, it would be Irv Smith at 3K. And um, yeah, I have one for a sleep as a sleeper in tournaments, but um, in cash, eh, I, I don't feel great about him. But he has seen five targets in each of the last two games they've played. The Packers haven't seen a whole lot of of targets against tight ends, but when they have seen targets, they've allowed production. So at 3K, if you're really 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 looking to save some money, I guess that's where I go. All right, I can feel Joe already getting antsy with the fact that we have not yet. No, talked no, about I just GPP wanted to make sure that I was prepared properly. You know me. I'm just you give me you an assignment. I'm teasing you. I show course. up ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to <laughs> you go. You always do. You always do. Well, let's right. go. Let's go to GPP. Let's start at I running back. Any. As no, we just <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Pros DFS show. I'm um, go ahead, Joe. Oh, uh, look. All right. So when again, this is about not necessarily uh, the sexiest pick in the world, but if Mixon is out, Gio Bernard yet again becomes something you really have to consider. Like, it's just, it's one of those things he is going, he's already had that opportunity around the end zone anyway, even when Mixon was around. So right off the bat there, that's something to consider and understand. Um, I think that there is almost a lock that Le'Veon Bell comes away with a touchdown this week. So I can understand playing him. I also think that on the, on the full point PPR, there's something about LaMichael P. Ryan, too, because the Jets will inevitably be behind. And I don't like it on FanDuel. I like it on DK specifically because of the full point PPR there, because I think if they are starting to work him out a little bit more here as the season goes on and, and you know, Gore's been OK, which is, you know, that's Frank Gore, right? He's always OK. I think that you want to see, OK, are they going to throw the ball to him a little bit more? Are they going to, you know, try to push the ball a little bit if they're down 20 points or whatever that is? And that plays a little bit better into P. Ryan. So Geo, Bell, P. Ryan, those are three guys. I think you could take a shot on Gaskin. I think it's more of a GBP play than a cash game play because Gaskin's looked pretty good this year. It's just a matter of the unknown and the unknown will scare a lot of people, which is good when you're looking at roster percentage. Tags, GPP, running Galvin back. Galvin Cook. Go. I yeah, that's a great one. Ooh. I I, I <laughs> had a sneaking suspicion you would go that. The route. Packers are the no no seriously. The Packers are the worst run defense in the NFL. 
the worst. It's just a matter of like getting mm-hmm. on the field. That is that is all in. That is chips all in, and you might they might explode. He might leave that game in the second carry. Yep. Like you just no no. And I love it. I <laughs> yep, love that's, it. Dude. That's what that's what you, that, that's the tournament play, right? And like running backs, so people are either going to go up to Kamara or Henry, or they're going to skip down. They're going to be like, oh, I'm playing. I'm playing Kareem Hunt, which, like you should. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, if you can get Kareem Hunt in there with Dalvin Cook, those two can go bananas and score thirty points. All right. I like it. Anybody else tags you want to go on for GPP or that's your dude? No, nah, running backs. I, I've, I've learned from some of the best uh, basically to stick like the running back pool. You should not extend too much. OK. All right. Let's go to wide receiver. Joe, start us off. GPP. Oh, it's Kendrick Bourne, uh, especially on DK. Uh, talk about free squares. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Right. I mean, we're looking for a guy who's got upside, all that stuff. I mean, he is thirty five hundred on DK. He's five K on Fanduel. He's a pretty good play there. Um, Ayuk is an interesting one as well. Um, and depending on the win situation and what we're doing, you know, Richard Higgins, I think immediately becomes useful. I, it always, it's funny because two weeks ago I had a long, like not a long, but a conversation on air about Higgins It's like, you know, we should all be picking up this guy because, you know, it, it always looks like he is most comfortable throwing to this dude over the last two years. And it just feels like he's just buried kind of in terms of depth chart. And then boom, all of a sudden Odell gets hurt and then here's Higgins. And uh, again, the weather could be an issue, but I think Higgins is also an intriguing play and not just Rashard Higgins, but also T Higgins as well. So all the Higgins you can possibly get this week. Those are some guys that I like a lot in terms of cheap. All right. Roll out all Higgins. All Higgins. Lineups. All the Go Higgins. ahead. Tag. <laughs> what do you got for GPP? At wide receiver? Um, all right. So Tyreek Hill is certainly someone I want to mention. It's, uh, it's 7,600. Yep. I actually thought about or 6,700. They've priced, they started pricing him down more and more and more. And it's like, there's going to be an explosion there and you kind of don't want to miss it. He, uh, cause he hasn't topped hundred yards in a game yet this year. So he could do that in the first half against the jets real quick. One last name, uh, Marcus Johnson, three K. Uh, just as like if you're looking for a minimum price guy at wide receiver 3k uh, Marcus Johnson he he saw eight targets the last time he was on the field they said during the bye week they incorporated more of him into the offense so I I'm curious to see if he just kind of overtakes T.Y. Hilton at this point all right let's go to quarterback here Joe who do you like GPT? oh it's hard not to like Garoppolo you know it's 66 mm-hmm. over on uh, FanDuel I mean that's that's the guy who immediately when you look past that that tier of the mid to low sevens which is basically like every quarterback that you could possibly like this week you go okay Let's go behind, below that. And what's infuriating is when you look at a Jimmy Garoppolo game log and even the wins are all over the map where you're like, oh, like even last week, you look at the stats and you go, <laughs> right. oh, this is terrible. Like they, this could very well be that kind of a contest again in terms of his scoring. But I think with Seattle and how bad they've been against the pass, I think you have to take that shot. He's 54 on DK, 66 over on FanDuel. And it makes sense to, it's just, it's too good not to at least try in a lineup or two. All right, let's go to tight end. GPP, Joe, start us off. Uh, Well, you know, depending on the Austin Hooper scenario, but maybe even not depending on it. I don't know. Harrison Bryant's kind of interesting to me. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about free squares, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, I that was the guy I on mean, my list as free well. Free square, the guy looked good, uh, and he's just 3,200 on DK. He's 5K over on FanDuel. I think you got to like that. And the other guy for me is Irv Smith, where um, I'm looking, and Mike just mentioned it before, but another free square, 3K. 3K. And and I think that this is a different version of the Vikings offense that you're going to see because Jefferson wasn't doing what he's been doing in week one. Irv Smith was not a thing at all in week one. And it's got a little boom or bust in it. There's no doubt about that. But I think you like the trend of it, at least, especially on uh, on DK with both of those guys. I mean, they are dirt cheap. And this is what I was talking about before. Taking that shot at tight end, even at 3K, if they if they don't have a great day. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't hit a pay line either. If your defense outperforms, if you have that one transcendent running back or wide receiver performance, you can overcome this and still hit a pay line in cash. And I think that's something to to, to understand and and build into your 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 psyche when you're making DFS lineups. So tags, I mean, Devin Asiasi, Dalton Keen, they're only Stop on, on DraftKings. I'm going Are Ryan we, Izzo, we Mofo. Going there um, <laughs> no, all right. So I, this is like a, this so is a good. deep sleeper. Okay, so Will Disley, he had he had not run more than 14 routes in the first five games. Their last game, he ran 29 to Greg Olson's 36. Will Disley is one of the most efficient tight ends that has ever played. It's a very small sample size, but he plays with Russell Wilson. And this guy was coming off an Achilles tear it left from last season. That's a bad injury to come back from. It seems like he may have gotten over that hump and he might start to pass up Greg Olson. So it's something to monitor um, as a pass catcher for Russell Wilson. Uh, and then the other one I wanted to mention is Robert Tunyon. 
uh, at 4,300. Uh, you know, again, we talked about Aaron Jones potentially being out. It could lead to more tight end work for those guys. And we saw Jay Sternberger score last week. That could just as easily be Robert Tunyon this week uh, against Minnesota. So uh, the team that's, you know, blood fantasy points to tight ends. <laughs> okay. All right. I love it. All right. Let's go to DST here. Let Joe go uh, first Joe. because he's going to tell you to pay up for the Chiefs at 4,500. Well, last week I told everyone to not pay up for the Bills, but to pay for the Chiefs instead. <laughs> so just, oh, good call. Yeah, and and right. my, mine is everywhere you can find podcasts. I, so I now, hey, now I need I need to find out who you're going to recommend this week. <laughs> well, here here's here's the thing. It's it, it is perfectly fine to pay up for the Chiefs this week. I don't think look, Chiefs defense is pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chiefs defense is going to, you know, show up there. They're going to give the Jets all they can handle, I'm sure. If you don't think there's turnovers in the Jets offense, you're crazy. But the other place that there's been a lot of turnovers and the reason actually last week I recommend people don't, you know, I like to look at the turnover list. Every time I'm targeting, you know, a defense, look, look at the offensive turnovers of the other teams. And, you know, right, right below Dallas, who's been a, you know, a turnover disaster, those little Denver Broncos and he gets circling them. And I'm going to circle them this week, too. If Ingram continues to get healthy here, I, I don't know. I, I feel like they're an uninspired offensive team and a team that struggles moving the chains at times and certainly has, has lacked in, in offense in terms of scoring. I think that there's some opportunity there for some turnovers for the Chargers, too. So the Chargers would be my pivot defense. I, I also think that there's a case to be made against Mike's uh, Bears with New Orleans as much as I don't like the New Orleans defense. I, I can understand that. But for me, it's Chiefs and Chargers. Those are the two I'm looking at this week. So just generally speaking, Joe, you are willing to pay up for DSTs. Not, in not, DFS. you know, it's funny. It's, it's very, it's very by the moment. Like it's, it's, it's a very matchup based thing for me. I, there, I would say probably there's four to five times in a football season where I'm like, yep, this is a pay up de- defense. And, and typically I would say three of the five are correct. And I think it's okay to do that, especially on FanDuel. You know, where that can be a real difference maker when a defense scores a touchdown because of the scoring there. So I think that's that's the one thing to keep in mind, too. Now, on DK, I've had the polar opposite. Like Chris Meany and I last year, when we were doing the DFS show together, we would we were hitting that defense that that was a twelve hundred dollar Washington football team defense over and over. <laughs> right. It's like, well, give me free points. I'll take my four points from Washington and I'll just spend up on everywhere else. So I think on DraftKings, it's a very different thought process than it is on FanDuel. Yeah, the Chargers, meanwhile, because you mentioned against the Broncos, they're the second highest priced defense on DraftKings, but they are they're a lower. way down. I not mean, way not, down, but they're crazy. they're a big, they're a, a difference. Uh, they're 4,900, yeah. I think, or something. No, that's the they're Rams. They're 43, sorry, 43. On, on DraftKings. Sorry about that, yeah. yes. So they're they're probably the 10th highest yeah. priced defense. That's a good value. Uh, that's I'll, a good value there. Yep. Unless you're playing all Patriots, I'm not going to be able to fit the, the Chiefs or Chargers in my, in my team. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, but I'm you are, to... so you'll be fine. I have the Chargers defense in that same lineup I was talking about with Adams and Brown and Derek well, Henry. Well, FanDuel so allows it, you to have so like literally studs throughout your entire lineup, and you have like one scrub, and you're yeah. fine. But that, that, and if you get yeah. that scrub right, <laughs> you're going to win a couple grand. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm going to go down. I'm just going to be like 2,400 for the Dolphins defense against the Rams. That's probably where I'm... God, yep. the Rams are... I think that's... How infuriating are the Rams, by the way? Just as like a, a moment here. Can we have a moment of how infuriating that team is? Sure. They're so all over the board. I don't know what the hell from quarter to quarter they are. I don't think they know. It's just... <laughs> I don't think and, they and know. And you know what's telling? Whenever you see um, a, a a big divide, like when you see... You mentioned um, here, uh, Dan, that the Chargers were, what, the second highest on DK this week, right? Yep. That Correct. is that is a huge – always take advantage of that. Whenever you see like why is this way up high once but one algorithm and typically the DraftKings algorithm is telling you where the value really is for the most part. They tend to catch up faster. If you see all mm-hmm. of a sudden, whoa, whoa, they're the 10th over on FanDuel and there's a divide, hit that divide wherever it is yep. always. Yep, that's a great point. All right, let's finish up, guys. Stack of the week. Joe, start off. You guys have kind of mentioned <laughs> it a little bit, but go ahead. Stack of the Tennessee, week, Tennessee, Tennessee, mm-hmm. Tennessee. I want Tennessee. <laughs> I want Seattle, uh, Cincinnati. And uh, that's the game stack of the day for me because it's just it's so user friendly. It's going to be fun. You can have lots of different pieces moving in and out of it. And uh, I mean, the other one's got to be San Fran, Seattle. Those are those are the four teams that I think you have to have some shares of. You have to look at the totals. You have to look at the competitive nature potentially of that game or the lack of defense (laughs) that gets played at times in those in those games. So that's where I'm going. Yep, it's an affordable stack to do as well. Uh, Joe Burrow, A.J. Green, T.J. uh, T. Higgins and um, Derek Henry on the other side. Yep. I love it. Uh, let's finish up with lock of the week. Joe, what do you got? Oh, DJ Brown. I mean, what a great price. Lock him up. I mean, on FanDuel, it's yeah. nuts. Like, it's, it should, he shouldn't be that cheap. 
Thank you. Thank you. It's the first time that like literally in three weeks that someone hasn't stolen my lock of the week. It's uh, it's Kareem Hunt <laughs> playing. Yeah, no, I, I figured that. I told Joe in advance, please don't list Kareem yeah. Hunt because I know that's yours. We want to make sure that you feel good about yourself at the end of the show. Oh, stop it. Stop I know it. you get mad every time. All right, that's going to do it. God, I love when Joe comes on the show. Um, Joe, it was great having you on. Just remind everybody the 17 places where they can find you and your work. Well, fair, the podcast is over. I can't believe it's over. We had so much fun on the show. Um, oh, all right, uh, you can find me every Sunday morning with uh, Matt Stryker and the Eric Young hosting uh, Fantasy Game Day on Sports Grid, uh, two-hour fantasy show. I mean, where do you get that? Talking about season-long and DFS. Um, also, you can catch me on there on Sports Grid uh, Monday through Friday with Craig Mish from 12 to 2 Eastern. Uh, you can check me on the Line Star podcast for DFS and wagering. You can check me on the Black Book podcast and, uh, and here all the time because I love you guys. That's right. We love you too. Thank you for coming on. Thanks to Pristine Auction. Don't just take my word for it. Go. Go to pristineauction.com. Check it out. Thousands of auctions every single day. Pristineauction.com. P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Don't forget to use our code FANTASYPROS in the registration field when you sign up. Thanks to Stat Hero. Seriously, daily fantasy sports on one hand, Survivor on the other hand. Put those hands together. Go to stathero.com. Use our code FANTASYPROS. Take your fantasy experience to the next level. We will be back tomorrow talking injuries with Dr. Chow, of course, and breaking down every game with Dan and Kyle in the morning. Talk to you then. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. While you're here, don't forget to check out the featured videos. While you're at it, go over to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Fantasy Pros to get news and updates throughout your season to help you dominate the competition.